Hi, it's Steph, and I'm at the Home Depot, and they have a whole new shipment of evergreens, perennials, and annuals. So let's go ahead and take a look at the May inventory at the Home Depot. Check out these cool braided willows. Now from afar, I thought that this was bamboo because the foliage sort of looks like it and even the canes from further away. But look how cool this is. So pretty. It looks like you would have to keep cleaning up the canes because the foliage wants to keep sprouting. So if you wanted to keep this aesthetic, you'd have to kind of clean those up and just keep the foliage at the top. But these here are, it looks like a 12 inch planter for $79.98. Lots of evergreen trees, specifically arborvitae. There is the arborvitae smaragad, which is a type of emerald green arborvitae, as well as the green giant. So if you're looking to create a privacy living fence or privacy hedge in this spring weather where it's nice and cool and we're getting rain, there is lots to choose from here. The prices range from $29.98 to $59.98, depending on size. The smaller ones are more affordable and easier to plant, and they grow generally pretty quick, especially the green giants. This here is a pretty large green giant. And the other great thing about the green giant versus the emerald green is that the green giant is more deer resistant. They still have quite a few of the Ito Peony Bartzella. This is a really beautiful yellow peony. And the great thing about the Itos is that they are more sturdy than the herbaceous peonies. They require a little less staking. They're a cross between an herbaceous peony and a tree peony. This Bartzella is in a number three container for $39.98. That beautiful bloom. So pretty. And these get uh, medium size, I would say. Plant in full sun, prefers moist, well-drained soil, three to four feet tall and wide. Hardy down to a zone four. And the Lemony Lace Elderberry is now all leafed out. Now, this is a beautiful elderberry. From afar, it sort of looks like a Japanese maple with this leafy foliage. Um, this is a yellow version, which is a bit more compact than, say, the Black Lace Elderberry, which can get pretty large. So the Black Lace Elderberry gets anywhere from 10 to 12 feet tall and wide, where this Lemony and the lace one stays somewhere in the three to five feet tall and wide range, but really beautiful. These are not deer resistant in my experience. So if you plant them and you deal with deer, something to be aware of. And these are proven winners. Number two containers for $29.98. Some Baptisia or false indigo, and these are really beautiful. They're very short blooming in my experience, at least in my garden. I have the traditional blue variety, and these look like they would be yellow. Um, it doesn't have a tag. They're in the Home Depot house containers. They are a number three container for $19.98, which is pretty affordable for Baptisia. Now, these have a deep tap root, and they don't like to be moved. So when you plant them, be sure that you like the spot. And they can get quite large, so give them some space. Look how beautiful that is. The good thing about Baptisia or false indigo is that even when the blooms are spent, the foliage is really pretty. It has like a blue gray tint to it and it makes a really good filler in cut flower arrangements. My store has a special buy sale here on the number three containers of salvia for $16.88. Salvia is an absolutely beautiful workhorse perennial for your garden. I would say it's one of those foundational plants. The pollinators absolutely love it. it will bloom most of the season with proper deadheading and it just has this really beautiful vertical interest in shades of purple. And they have a couple of varieties here. I have one in my garden called May Night and it is absolutely beautiful. They have here a variety called Caradonna, which is also another really popular salvia. I have a video on my channel on how I prune my salvia to get continual blooms throughout the season. You can check that out if you'd like, but look how pretty this is. It blooms for me here in my zone six in May, so any day now. And the Caradonna salvia variety is a perennial for full sun. It gets 18 to 24 inches in height, needs a 12 inch spacing, water when dry, and it's hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It does like a, like a well draining soil that leans dry. Once it's established, it can even take some drought. And very easy to divide after a couple of years. 
They have some of these beautiful hydrangeas that are called the florist hydrangeas. They typically sell these around Easter and Mother's Day, which is coming up this weekend. If you get one of these as a gift, just know that these are greenhouse grown, which means they have been grown in a controlled environment and they're not always hardy for outdoor temperatures. So if you plant this outside, it's very possible that it never blooms for you again. Um, but just enjoy it as a, you know, flower arrangement for the time that you have it. And if you choose to plant it somewhere, um, just have low expectations, but they are very beautiful. They have a couple of Japanese maples that are all leafed out at the moment. Now this is a variety called Verdi's or just a green Japanese maple. The foliage on Japanese maples is absolutely beautiful. And this one has its spring coloring with the red outer margins on the edges there really pretty. Now these trees are part shade trees in general. The red varieties can take a little bit more sun in the beginning when you newly plant it, especially if it's getting a little bit more sun, it's possible that the leaves will start to crisp and that will happen for a couple of years until they start to acclimate and then eventually over time they will start getting less leaf scorch. But in general if you plant these in a part shade location um, they usually do a bit better. Beautiful trees. And this one here is, let's see how much. Now the size on them range as well. They're a medium sized tree with most of them only getting 15 to 20 feet tall and wide. Acer Palmatum is a number seven container for $99. Here is a red lace leaf variety. Now it's just named Japanese Maple Red Select, but it does look like the foliage on a Tamakiyama. Really pretty. I have a couple of these in my garden. I have a Tamakiyama as well as a Garnet. And this red coloring just offers a lot of interest and contrast all of the green in the garden. They look really pretty in an ornamental landscape setting. This Acer Dissectum Red is $69.98 for a number three container. All of the flowering trees are looking so beautiful at the moment. Here is a crab apple, and this is the Prairie Fire crab apple. It has this really beautiful deep pink bloom. Crab apples are great because they bloom in spring, and then they set fruit for our bird friends with the tiny crab apples in fall. And there are persistent varieties and non-persistent. And what that means is persistent varieties, the fruit holds onto the tree a bit better so that it's less messy. And the non-persistent, will drop the crab apples. For the specs on the crab apple prairie fire, it likes full sun. It gets to be about 20 feet in height and 20 feet in width, making it a medium sized tree. And it is hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Blooms in early to mid spring. These number seven containers of the crab apples are 84.98. And one of my favorite blue evergreens for how beautiful the color is and how little maintenance it is, is the blue star juniper. So it is deer resistant and I can vouch for that because I have four in my garden and lots of deer and they do not touch them. They get to be, it says here, 24 to 36 inches in height. In my experience, I've had four of them planted for about 10 years and it's only gotten about 12 to 18 inches or so in height. So very low growing and their spread is about three to four feet in diameter. Now, anytime that you have a shrub in either a bright blue like this or golden yellow, they prefer more sun to keep this beautiful vibrant color. But this is a stunning, evergreen. It grows in a rounded, mounded shape. And these here are $16.98. They're also very hardy, down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are number one containers. Some panicle hydrangeas that already are starting to bud up here. Now, panicle hydrangeas grow on new wood, and they're also more sun tolerant than, say, the macrophylla type hydrangeas or the mop head big leaf hydrangeas. So, this one here, it likes part sun, large blooms, says it gets 24 to 28 inches in height and needs 24 inch spacing. So, it looks like it's a compact variety, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are in the Home Depot brand containers, two gallon for $26.98, and it's called Hydrangea Panicle Early Evolution. And a few more really beautiful evergreens, starting here with this Fire Chief Arborvitae. It is called Fire Chief Tuja, and it grows in a rounded habit, which is wonderful when evergreens grow in that rounded habit. So unlike boxwood, these would not require any pruning to keep that shape. And the great thing about this one is that it also has really beautiful winter color. You can see here that it gets this bronzy kind of reddish appearance during the late fall. It will start to transition and keep that way until the winter is over. And then as we get into the warmer temps of spring and summer, it starts to go really bright yellow and chartreuse green. It's just a really pretty evergreen. 
So here is the information on the Fire Chief Tuja. It has a rounded habit, reddish orange foliage, and this one's the Congabi. It's non-flowering. It likes light, uh, full sun. So mine is in a full sun, part sun. It does really well. And the mature size is four by four, and it is hardy in zones five through nine. And this one here is a number three container for $29.98. Right beside the Fire Chief Arborvitae is a Hinoki Cypress, another evergreen that I absolutely love in my garden, and I have several of them. They have this foliage that sort of looks like it's fanning and stacked, just really beautiful. And this one here is called Coster's False Cypress Costeri, and it is really pretty. These like full sun. I find them pretty deer resistant in my garden. And let's see, they get to be 36 to 48 inches in size down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and it looks like it get up to 48 inches in height and this here is let's see a number three container for 34.98 such beautiful texture on this one and a gold evergreen that I also have lots of experience with is this one here, the False Cypress Golden Mop. I have a couple of these in my garden. One of them had outgrown its space, so I actually pruned it into a small tree topiary. And I have a video about that on my channel. And this one here likes full sun. It is golden, so if you put it in more sun, it'll have this most yellow color. If you have it in shade, you'll sort of get more of a green coloring, sort of what you see underneath where it doesn't get any sun has a really loose kind of texture, just really pretty. And it is deer resistant, I can vouch for that. They don't touch them in my garden. Gets to be four to six feet in height and needs 36 to 48 inch spacing. Hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Gold Mop Cypress is also in a number three container for $29.98. Evergreens are an invaluable addition to any garden. They add so much interest year round. Look at this color combination. Having some green evergreens, some yellow, some that take on a bronze coloring, and some of this beautiful blue makes such an interesting combination. So visually pleasing. So I have these larger containers of the Blue Star Juniper. The other one we looked at was a one gallon, and this is a number three for $29.98. I really love all of these colors together and some ewes, also known as taxis. And this variety is the U densformis. Now these also have a really pretty texture and look at all the color, the light green on this new growth. So pretty. They have an upright growth habit and they're actually really soft to the touch. Unlike some evergreens that can bite a little, they can be a little prickly, right? Not these, they're really soft, which also makes them perfect candidate for deer browsing. So these are not deer resistant. There are some types of ewes, however, that are deer resistant. The ones that are labeled as plum ewe are more deer resistant. So this one here likes part sun. It gets to be 36 to 48 inches in height. It needs six to eight foot spacing and it is hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And these containers here are a number three for $29.98. There's also a beautiful golden variety of ewe. Check that out. Let's see what these are called. Taxis Bacata. Now there isn't a spec card on these, but that is the name if you wanted to Google it, but it has a really pretty golden color. Even the older foliage looks like it would be gold. Where the other one looks like the new growth was chartreuse and then will age to green, this one looks like it might have some yellow all the time. This variety is called Taxis Bacata Aurea and it is a number three container for $29.98. If you have an area in your garden that is tough to mow, a hillside that you might need to retain soil and you're having some issues with erosion, this is a great evergreen. This is a blue rug juniper and the variety is called Wiltoni. It has a really beautiful blue coloring and it has a horizontal growth habit. It stays relatively low and it makes a great ground cover. These containers here are number three for $26.98. And I'll pull it away so you can kind of get an idea of the shape of the plant. These make a great option for any spot in your garden that would be difficult to mulch. The Blue Rug Juniper Wiltoni likes full sun. It is deer resistant. It gets to be about six inches in height and it needs four to six foot spacing, hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. 
And here's a plant that I just can't say enough great things about. I absolutely love this in my garden. It is a type of grass called sweet flag. This particular variety is called sweet flag ogon, and it is a variegated type. It has variegation of yellow and green. What I love about this is that it's a problem solver grass for me because I have an area of the garden that stays really wet and this handles moist soils like a champ. It thrives. It also can handle full sun in my garden because it's getting enough moisture and it stays evergreen. So it's brightest in spring and summer. It goes a little paler in the winter colder months, but it still stays intact and evergreen for me. It is just wonderful. It's also a great dupe for the Hakanakloa or the Japanese forest grass. It is more readily available, I find, at local box stores and garden centers and at an affordable price point. Also really easy to divide. So it says here it's a perennial grass, likes part sun, $12.98 for this container and it gets to be six to 12 inches in height. It needs six to eight inch spacing and water when dry, hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine has gotten quite large. I, if I had to guess, it's somewhere around 18 to 24 inches in diameter, and it does get about 12 or so inches in height. Really pretty one and some beautiful ground cover. This is called spotted dead nettle, also known as lamium. And this particular variety is called, let's see, pink pewter. Now what I love about this is that they're a wonderful ground cover. They have this beautiful silvery foliage and they even set out blooms. You can see here, Look how beautiful this is. It's even excellent used in a container. I have this as a ground cover in a woodland area of my garden, planted under some trees, and I absolutely love this bright pop of silver in a shady spot. This one has a few blooms on it. So this is a great perennial, super easy to divide. In fact, this one is pretty packed. You could purchase this one container and already divide it at home right off the bat. Just make sure you keep your transplant nicely watered and protected from too much sun while the plant establishes best to even make divisions in transplants when it is an overcast day and you might be expecting rain um, or in the evening when the sun starts going down and it's cool. Really pretty one. And these here are $9.98. Says that it gets 8 to 12 inches in height, space 6 to 10, but it does spread because it grows horizontal more than it does vertically, being a ground cover. Water when dry, hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so it is very hardy and it blooms early to mid-summer and some gara and they have some in white and a really pretty deep rose pink now this is a plant that pollinators absolutely love it has a really beautiful kind of whimsical appearance especially in a breeze and it's very similar to a native variety that i'm looking for actually to add to my garden called galinia trifoliata but this is really pretty. Now, Gara does like a well-draining soil in full sun. Um, I had planted some in an area that stood a little bit wet and I lost it. It didn't return for me after winter. So this one here is a perennial. It likes full sun. It is $9.98 for this container and it is called Gara Beliza White. It gets to be 36 to 48 inches in height. It needs 24 to 36 inch spacing, water when dry and hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Blooms early summer through mid fall. And what that means is that if you deadhead it, it will continue to put out blooms. And deadheading just means finding the spent bloom. So see this one here, looks like it's almost done. You would follow this stem all the way down and just cut it off. And then the plant will continue to produce more blooms instead of going to seed. And here is the pink variety. And the pink one is called Beliza Dark Pink and it has the same specs. Also a full sun perennial. And check out this sweet daisy, it's ruffly which is different than the single petaled daisies that we're used to seeing, like the traditional Shasta daisy. And it's full of buds. And a daisy is such a quintessential cottage garden flower. And let's see, this one here is called Shasta Daisy Sweet Daisy Rebecca. It's a perennial for full sun. It gets to be 12 to 36 inches in height. It needs 12 to 24 inch spacing. Water when dry, hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit and blooms early summer through fall. These are their larger two gallon containers for $14.98. It has a really interesting frilly bloom some clematis or clematis depending on how you pronounce it and clematis is a wonderful plant it does like a very fertile soil so they're heavy feeders and like a lot of compost or fertilizer in early spring they also like their head in the sun and their feet in the shade so they're great to plant with say other perennials kind of at the base to shade it some people even use rocks or stones and this one here is called Elsa Spath and it's a perennial vine 1998 for this it says it climbs up to six to ten feet in height 
and it gets 24 to 36 inch width in width or for spacing hardy down to negative 30 degrees fahrenheit and it also likes a well draining soil i have lost a couple i think because they stood too wet um, but give them something to climb and they'll be really happy these also make a great Mother's Day gift. I gave my mom one to put on her lamppost a few years ago. And this one here is called Clematis Pilu. And it looks like a pink variety. Good for trellises. Looks like it stays a little bit shorter at four to six feet in height. So they, there are different heights or different lengths that these will reach. Um, so something to keep in mind. So depending on how tall your arbor is, um, or if you have just a trellis, you wanna make sure that you pick one that would be size appropriate. It looks like it needs 36 to 48 inch spacing and it blooms early to late summer. There's also different times where they bloom in different uh, clematis groups. So it, that would be important to know when you're ready to prune your clematis. There's group one, two, and three, and so forth. How about these beautiful geraniums that are in a self-watering container, 24.88 in a really pretty pink. They're, these blooms are large. These are some really large geranium blooms. They have such pretty foliage geraniums. Now, some of them have like a striping effect on the border. This one just has a really large shiny green leaf, but it looks like there is a reservoir at the bottom of this planter here to water your plant. And they have this hydro planter line. Looks like they have hanging baskets and containers. Another really great gift for the upcoming Mother's Day holiday. Oh, and it looks like it has a trailing, um, maybe some kind of vinca vine. Very pretty. How sweet is that? If moms were flowers, I'd pick you. Such a beautiful plant. And it comes in this adorable galvanized tin that looks like a watering can. Let me pull one out. How cute is that? I would absolutely love to get a gift like this so pretty because then you can use that planter you can put a plastic liner in it with some other plants so cute and these i believe are either new guinea impatience or sun patience we'll confirm that but i've grown these before in like an orange coral color they're stunning and they go for a really long time they do really well for me all season until my first hard frost and they have this beautiful pink one as well as this white one look how large these blooms are this is stunning are New Guinea Impatience. Actually found the color I've grown before. It's this one. Really pretty color. Nice and bright. I had it in a dark container with some yellow creeping jenny down the front and it looked stunning. So here it is. These are annuals. They get to be 8 to 12 inches in height. They need 4 to 6 inch spacing. Water when dry. And these small annuals by Vigoro here look like they are 4 for $12 currently. I have them in that coral color. There's also some red, some white, and some light pink. And these do best in shade. And some proven winners annuals as well. Look how pretty this one is. This is a verbena in this coral color. It is stunning. This looks beautiful paired with say a super tunia in purple. The Bordeaux is gorgeous. So this one here says that it's an annual. It likes part sun to sun. $5.98 for these one and a half pints. And it gets to be six to 12 inches in height and it needs eight to 12 inch spacing. Long blooming and heat tolerant. No deadheading needed. Fall interest in a bestseller. It's really pretty. And they kind of have like a hanging um, sort of trailing habit. So they would look really nice in a hanging basket with some petunias. See that? That's the combo I'm talking about. I love that. The purple with this peach. So pretty together. And some of the proven winners for tunias. And this one is the Super Tunia Raspberry Rush. Also $5.98 for all of these. And the thing with petunias is they have a tendency to get a little bit leggy at, you know, at some point throughout the season, but you can share these back. Don't be afraid. Cut these back. It'll revitalize the plant and it'll become bushier and send out a ton more blooms for you. They also benefit from weekly fertilizer. So something like a water soluble fertilizer that you'd mix into your watering can. Um, they really love that. And here are some really beautiful perennials. Check out the color on this Silver Mound or Artemisia. This is a beautiful perennial just to add textural and color element to your borders. So pretty. And it stays relatively low, so great for a front of a border. It is a perennial for full sun, Silver Mound Artemisia. These are $9.98. It says it gets to be 10 inches in height and needs 15 inch spacing. Water when dry and hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's also really soft. And another pretty 
plant here is some sedum. Now sedums are really drought tolerant plants. They actually don't like a lot of water and they also don't like soil that's very fertile. That is the number one thing that will make them start splitting in the middle and getting very scraggly is if they get too much fertilization or too much water. And they also need a lot of light. So full sun and a very well draining soil. So perennial full sun, this is called October Daphne Sedum Cyboldi. And it gets to be six to 10 inches in height and 24 inch spacing water when dry and hardy down to negative 40 degrees fahrenheit it blooms early summer through fall sedum is also super easy to divide and propagate if you're dividing this plant and you happen to lose a couple of stems just take those stick them in the soil they'll begin to root and give you a new plant and here's another beauty that i actually am going to pick up today look how pretty that looks with the pink this is a globe flower called lemon supreme Trolleus, it looks like is the botanical name for it. It's a perennial for full sun. These are 998 and it gets to be 10 to 12 inches in height and needs 12 to 18 inch spacing, water when dry, and it is hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Blooms mid, mid spring through summer. Now I actually purchased this plant last year and it was more of a golden color with this one is more of a buttery yellow. And the plant didn't return for me. So I don't know what I did wrong, but I really liked it. So I'm gonna try it again. Look at these blooms. They almost look like peonies, don't they? All of these delicate little ruffles, so pretty. There's a bunch of buds on it, so I'm gonna treat myself to this plant today. Here they are in a mass, and you can see how pretty they look paired with some purple columbine. So beautiful. Here's a plant I also have in my garden. It is called loosestrife. Now, loosestrife can be pretty invasive, some varieties. This one I can say has been pretty well behaved in my garden. It is called Alexander, Lassamachia Alexander. It gets to be 18 to 24 inches in height. It needs 18 to 24 inch spacing, water when dry, and hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It blooms midsummer through fall, and it has a really pretty foliage. So not only does it get those yellow blooms, the foliage is really beautiful. It's like green and cream with a little hint of pink some ladies mantle and what better time to showcase how beautiful ladies mantle foliage holds on to raindrops as when it's raining it just started to rain a few minutes ago um, and i'm on my way out so i figured i'd just show you a couple more things i actually love to be outside doing anything gardening in the rain it's so refreshing so not only are ladies mantle foliage beautiful but so are their blooms for me here in my zone six in june they will get these sprays of chartreuse flowers that are so stunning these look beautiful paired with things like nepeta and roses they could take sun and part sun they're just a really great perennial and so easy to divide and multiply in your garden. So this variety is called Ladies Mantle Gold Strike. You can see here in the photo what the flowers sort of look like. They're very dainty. Sprays of flowers almost look like baby's breath in a really pretty chartreuse color. And they get to be 12 to 14 inches in height. When they have their blooms, they get a little bit taller. They need 16 to 18 inch spacing, water when dry and hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Blooms late spring through summer some centuria or cornflower. This variety is called amethyst and it's a really pretty white one with a purple center. This bloom actually kind of looks like a spider, doesn't it? And when the bloom bud is closed, it reminds me of a pineapple. It can also look sort of like that Spanish lavender. Now there are two varieties here. There is the white and there is the purple. The purple spreads prolifically. My sister-in-law has some in her garden and she has quite a bit of it. I have tried the white one before and it didn't return for me, but I bought a new one this year because I really like it, so I wanna try it again. And here are the specks on this plant here. It's also called Mountain Bluette. Santeria Montana. Amethyst in snow is the white variety. It gets to be 14 inches in height, needs 28 inch spacing, water when dry and hardy down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Blooms late spring through summer. Now some of this foliage needs to be cleaned up, but that's easy enough to do. But this is another perennial that is a workhorse, specifically the purple one. And a really sweet ground cover called Sweet Woodruff. I actually just posted a video on my channel with eight perennial ground covers and this was a recommendation that came up a few times sweet woodruff now it has these really sweet little white blooms and the foliage even reminds me of lupin this one is by vigoro it's listed as a ground cover it attracts butterflies is deer resistant and has a spreading habit 1098 and let's see where it's hardy 
hardy down to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and gets to be 8 to 12 inches in height and it blooms mid-spring through summer. Well, with that, it brings us to the end of the May inventory here at the Home Depot. I hope that you enjoy checking out what my store has in stock, and I hope that you can find some of these varieties near you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button, and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos, and we'll see you soon.